Presley to right center. Parker Meadows waving off Perez. They collide. Perez makes the catch. Tigers are back in the postseason. They pour out of the dugout. Let the celebration begin. Oh, man, this team, this team believes. Eight games under, ten games back, seven weeks ago, they just kept working. Committed to playing the game the right way, winning games 90 feet at a time. It is complete team baseball. These guys are playing for each other. They're playing for these great fans, and it's led to one of the greatest finishes you will ever see. October baseball is back in Detroit. Oh, isn't it just beautiful? First time in 10 years. Tigers are going back to the postseason. 4-1 over the White Sox. There's more business to do today, though. A couple of games left in the regular season. One of those today. Tigers, White Sox, Comerica Park. 1245 this afternoon right here on WKZO. Cubs beat the Reds 1-0 at Wrigley yesterday. That game lasted 1 hour 48 minutes. Wow. High school football, Pawpaw School, Craft Portage Northern, Lawton, Kalamazoo Central, and Parchment all won big. Portage Central beat Matawan 7-0. Lloyd Norris top Battle Creek Central 6-0. Bronco football is this afternoon against Marshall uh, down in Huntington, West Virginia. Uh, 3 o'clock pregame on 106.5 Jack FM. And that is sports for a Saturday morning. And good morning and welcome to Nature Watch. Nature Watch is brought to you by Waddell's Nursery Floral Garden and Bird Center at the corner of 12th Street and Millam Road. And now, live from somewhere in the Upper Peninsula, I do believe, and I think I have him back now. Yes, I do. I'm Gary Miller. Now. There you are. Good morning, sir. We just had to good reconnect. Morning. We just had to reconnect is all. All right. How are you? Good. Actually, no rain up here. It's actually been beautiful weather up here, but low 70s during the day, nice cool at night down the upper 40s, low 50s. Okay. We're nice get- clear skies. We are getting um, we are getting east to west precipitation today, courtesy of uh, Helene. So, you know, that's kind of the way it's yeah, working not, out. Not, it doesn't look like you're going to get a whole lot, though. Um, or at the, it looks like you're at the northern edge of the, uh, you're right. the rain. So we need rain. I, I had had a half, half an inch earlier in the week, and... Uh, well, much needed rain, but uh, still needed some more. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, yeah, th- this last week's weather has been uh, has been crazy. Some people got dumped on, others dry as a bone. You know, it's just kind of the way things work out, I guess. And of course, our uh, uh, let's just throw in tornadoes for fun. Why not, huh? <laughs> Branch, oh, yeah. Branch County um, had a confirmed. Um, Cass County was warned. I'm not sure if that one was confirmed or not, but that is just bizarre for the end of September to, uh, have to deal with tornadoes in, in the, in this corner of the world, you know? And we may see, we may see a little bit more of that activity too, because of the Helene and, uh, with its rotation and then running into that jet stream that's going the opposite direction. So okay. we may see some more of that uh, severe weather. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. With, without, without giving your exact location, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually at Munising. <laughs> okay. Up on the Lake Superior Charlotte. <laughs> okay. So, so, lake hasn't froze over yet, it, has uh, it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so the colors are starting to change up here a little bit, a little okay. bit more advanced than what we have down in south, southern Michigan, but uh, not a lot of difference. Okay. Uh, another couple of weeks would be some fantastic color up here. Well, if if it gets they get some moisture, it's been really dry up here also, and uh, very evident with a lot of the lakes that are the inland lakes that are down significantly, and you can see it in the vegetation too that it's uh, been been quite dry. Okay, there you uh, go. And, and, and we have lots of, I actually saw turkey up here, but I actually saw um, 
signs of turkey and we were hiking around different times, had to stop for those inevitable white tails trying to cross the road. Oh. <laughs> um, they're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of turkeys down here, lots of deer still. Um, it's just if you go out driving in the country to enjoy the colors, be very alert. Yeah, so the uh, I was actually looking at the bird migration forecast, and uh, we are about halfway through the migration already, um, surprisingly. Okay. And uh, last, last night, there weren't a whole lot of birds that crossed Michigan. Um, there was some activity. It's interesting looking at the, because they, they track them by radar, um, all those birds, and it's an estimated number of birds that are flying. But last night's um, flight was interesting because you can see where they were avoiding the remnants of Helene. Um, all the migration patterns swung west um, over towards the Mississippi River more. Um, pretty interesting uh, fact. Um, actually, not a lot of migration last night. Um, it was on the lower side. Uh, but tonight and tomorrow night, it looks like it's going to be quite high uh, population of uh, birds migrating. And they, they uh, actually measure the migration of birds in birds per kilometer per night. Oh, okay. <laughs> Figure that one out. Yeah. Um, I don't, so, want, I don't so, <laughs> want to do that math. Thank you. Uh, I'll pass. <laughs> so, 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 that, so that number is actually the cumulative number of birds that fly within a night. They cross a one-kilometer line that transects on the Earth's surface oriented perpendicular to the direction of the movement of the birds. So basically, the line is drawn a kilometer long, uh, perpendicular to the flight pattern of the birds. And uh, they do that you know, all via radar and that, and then they estimate or count the number of birds that uh, cross that line in a night. Okay. So tonight and tomorrow night, it uh, looks like they're going to be over 18,000 birds per kilometer per night. So a lot of birds flying overnight. Uh, so a lot of a lot of activity. Most of that's going to be around 10, 10 30 or so at night. So it uh, will be uh, interesting to see. Uh, you know, with with Helene pushing a little bit further north, we may see a little bit of that activity pushing further west uh, until Helene recedes somewhat. Okay, I, I need to ask you this. Um, I, I shared a Facebook post um, that you may have seen, Gary. Uh, that um, there were that that showed a bunch of birds literally trapped in Helene's eye is, is, was that factual or did someone well, actually, I, I, admit, I had missed that one, but that would, that would be very, could be very factual. Uh, birds can only fly up uh, against certain, uh, and I can't remember what the full, uh, the, the prime or, or major uh, wind speed that they can fly against, but definitely not in hurricane strength winds. And so, uh, with those, all those strong winds around the eye of the hurricane, that could very well be that they would get trapped in that. Um, Helene will also, the birds that didn't do get caught in, uh, in those hurricane strength winds, or even the tropical storm winds, those are usually strong enough to, uh, to blow birds further north or out of their typical range. So some of those birds that have been migrating south, and uh, gosh, we're getting close to the Gulf of Mexico now. Um, Helene may have just pushed them further north back up to the Ohio River or north. Oh, uh, wow. So they got to so they got to migrate again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's like, did, uh, didn't we just so, do this so, trip? It, of course, it, you see one bird. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can hear the kids, that's for sure. So so it's important important because some of those birds, we may see some birds even in southern Michigan um, that have been pushed up from south that they, they came through once and now they're back again. Um, so it's important to have make sure they've got access to, to food. So if you haven't had your feeders out, may want to put those out. Just they may need some extra energy to refly south. Okay. And uh, other other important thing is keep your lights off at night. Um, that can really distract them trying to migrate because they're not uh, very high up in the sky. They go up uh, about maximum ten thousand feet up in the air, which is almost two miles. But usually they're much lower than that. And that nighttime light um, actually distracts them considerably and disorients them. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, I'll tell you what. Um, are we going to do trivia today? Um, in this. Oh, we can. Expanse. Okay. Sure. Why not? Um, yeah. Twenty dollars gift card to Waddell's. We'll throw that up for grabs. Um, three eight two four two eight zero. First correct caller. Uh, did you make this an easy one, considering your way up north, or did you since well, your way yeah, up since your way up north, you, you, you're slamming us because <laughs> you are I way up north. This, it, 
<laughs> I would say this is pretty easy. Okay. So I thought, well, gosh, I'm up here in the uh, Upper Peninsula, and most people think of, at least a lot of people think of Sini Wildlife Refuge, National Wildlife Refuge. Okay. And so I, I, my question today is, what was the first National Wildlife Refuge in Michigan? What was the first National Wildlife Refuge in the state of Michigan? Right. And it's not Sini, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay, there you go. So people are frantically Googling now. They should be able to find this one pretty fast. Okay, 382-4280. Uh, if you have not won in the last 30 days, please try to hold off and let somebody else win. Um, call, and if you so, so the national... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say call, and if you, you are the correct answer, or correct, if you have the correct answer, we'll get you a gift card. And while I'm getting the phones, you can talk. <laughs> yes. So uh, in 1903, March 14th, President Theodore Roosevelt established the Pelican Island National Wildlife Refuge along Florida's Atlantic coast as the first unit of what would become the National Wildlife Refuge System. Today, there are 568 national wildlife refuges and 38 wetland management districts that make up 95 million acres of land and 740 million acres of submerged lands and waters. Um, they're found from coast to coast and about every habitat imaginable. And they estimate that those uh, wildlife refuges uh, and wetland management districts contribute $3.2 billion per year into local economies. So it's actually nice to have those facilities there. You get a lot of activity with, there's actually a lot of recreation activities. Some of them allow hunting, um, fishing, a lot of bird um, observation and uh, wildlife observation. So we get a lot of uh, activity in those local economies. Yeah, there you go. And is, is any, any callers yet, Joe? Yeah, or yeah, they, they, yeah, I was waiting for you to stop talking so I could interject. <laughs> Three eight two four two eight zero. <laughs> We're looking for the first wildlife refuge in the state of Michigan. <clears throat> Judy is on the phone. Good morning, Judy. Good morning. You want to take a shot at Good this? Good morning. Yes, I was frantically Googling, as you said. <laughs> I came up with Sunny National Wildlife Refuge. Established in 1935. No, so so Sini was in 35. Actually, there was uh, at least several others in the state of Michigan before that. Oh, oh, Jim. so before before Sini. Uh, so so 19 I, so 1903 was when uh, Theodore Roosevelt established the first one. I will tell you the one that I'm looking for was established in Michigan in 1905. Oh, there you go. Oh, a couple there, years later. There, there's a hint for you, Judy. Try back again, okay? 382-4280. First wildlife refuge in the state of Michigan. And your your clue is it was established in 1905. Correct. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Sini was established in 1935. Um, and actually, we've got coming up here um, each October, the National Wildlife Refuge Week uh, coming up the... Uh, 9th through the 15th. And so the uh, refuge system is actually encouraging people to walk, roll, stroll, or for the wild, in the wild. And uh, if you go to uh, the National Wildlife Refuge System, there are some some of the refuge uh, locations that actually have activities during the week. Uh, the nearest one we have uh, to southwestern Michigan is actually over in the Detroit area. Oh. And uh, so they have some activities every day with uh, Doing some hikes and other activities in the in the refuges there. Okay, Ju uh, um, Judy wants to take another shot at this. By the way, <laughs> her fingers have been busy. Yes. Okay, Judy, take two. <laughs> Judy, oh wait a minute, I gotta hold on. I gotta put you on air, Judy. My bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Judy. What's your what's your second guess? Well, I guess my second guess would be the Detroit River. International Wildlife Refuge. Oh, that's actually a good guess, and that's actually the one that's got lots of activities coming up. But um, that's not the one that I'm looking for. Oh my goodness! But there's one, and, well, and the one I'm looking that. for is actually quite small. So another, another, another uh, includes eight small islands totaling 147 acres. So a very small oh. refuge. <laughs> Can okay. I take a third guess? No, call back, Judy. Let's 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 do that that way, okay? <laughs> call call Bye. back. Bye three eight two four two eight zero. Gary, you lied. You said this would be easy. <laughs> I thought it'd be pretty easy if people get this because uh, I, I I actually I actually googled it myself and found it pretty quick. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, yeah, I usually, usually, usually test that out just to make sure it isn't too easy. Ah, there you go. Uh, you might want to talk again for a second. We have a fresh caller. So a uh, couple, couple events coming up. Uh, this uh, next coming weekend, Wendell's has their apple pumpkin, pumpkin apple event. So all sorts of activities, fresh I apple cider, donuts, locally picked apples, and some uh, neat activities for the kids. Um, check out our website, Wendell's.com, for that. Um, Audubon Society next Saturday has their beginning birding walks out at the Wolf Lake State Fish Hatchery uh, off of uh, M43, and that's from 9 to 11. Um, go to the Audubon Society or the Wolf Lake Fish Hatchery websites, and uh, they have the information on that. It's for all um, ages or experiences of birders um, from very young to very old. They will have experienced birders leading those hikes. Oh, okay. And uh, coming up... A week, week and a half from now, the actually, Kellogg Bird actually, Sanctuary has their next online birds and coffee chat. Go ahead and uh, okay. put, a, put a hold on that one. Julius, I think, might crack the code here. <laughs> ah, Hello. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> what you morning, got, what Julius? You got, Julius? What you I, guess? I'm going to try Sini. Sini Wildlife. Reference. No, that was... That was no? Not, not the correct... Wildlife refuge. Oh, but, but another hint: it is in the Upper Peninsula, but it is not seeny. Oh, there you go. Try again, Julius. Three eight two four two eight zero. He tried to get another guess in there. I I got him. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, we we may have to take a break before uh before too long here. Uh -oh. Um, first wildlife refuge. Uh, so the bird things. The first. Uh, repeat that if you could. Yeah, you still there? Yeah. Oh uh, no, he's gone. I'm I'm still yeah, so here. So what what is the what was the First national. Now, what was the first? First national wildlife refuge, the refuge in the state of uh -huh. Michigan. Yeah, we're go what we'll do is during the break we'll get you reconnected, Gary, or you can reconnect. You're kind of going in and out, but I do have somebody on the phone. Okay, why don't you go ahead and chat for a second while I get this? Okay, so that uh, Kellogg Bird Sanctuary online birds and coffee chat is coming up on the 9th of October. That's from 10 to 11 a.m. And that's a Zoom connection. Um, they're actually uh, going to be talking about uh, help guide you through planning your first or next birding trip. Uh, no fee for the program, but you need to read to get that secure. And the hosts are educators Lisa Duke and Misty Clown, Kellogg Biological Station and Kellogg Bird Sanctuary. So again, that's the 9th of October. Okay. And uh, so, uh, you know, keep, I mentioned before the bird migration, uh, keep watching. Uh, those night skies. Um, if you go want to look up information uh, for locally, um, go to Birdcast, and uh, it's actually a, a site that's uh, operated by the Cornell Ornithological Ornithology Lab, along with Colorado State University and UMass Amherst. Um, and they keep that updated, and uh, that's all part of that. Uh, um, Cornell Lab actually does the Merlone app, so okay. a lot of neat um, accurate information on there. Ah, all right, three eight two four two eight zero. Uh, Francis, take a shot at this for me, would you? Okay, I'm going to guess the Huron National Wildlife Refuge. And Francis has the winner. Francis, there you go, <laughs> Atta boy. All right, uh, got a pretty smart phone here. Yeah, there, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, Francis, uh, I, I do have a $20 gift card to Waddell's coming your way. Can you hold on the line, and we'll take a break, and I'll grab some information from you, and we'll get it mailed out, okay? All right, thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you. Don't go anywhere, Francis, and don't you go anywhere, Gary. And we will be right back with more Nature Watch after this on WKZO. At Waddell's Nursery Florist and Garden Center. Bulbs are so easy to plant and give you so much enjoyment. Waddell's bulbs are sold in bulk so you can pick out exactly the amount you need. A beauty that's almost a must to welcome spring are bright yellow daffodils. This week, get extra large King Alfred daffodil bulbs on sale, 10 for just $3.70. Looking for something fragrant? Hyacinth bulbs come in many different colors and are now 20% off. Now is also the time to plant German bearded iris for beautiful orchid-like blooms next spring. 
Choose from 12 colors of iris, now just $7.99 each. Enjoy browsing Waddell's selection of more than 250 spring blooming bulbs, including tulips, crocus, allium, and more. And remember, food for your bulbs. All organic Espoma bulb tone will give them all the nutrients they need. Waddell's Nursery Florist and Garden Center. Open Monday through Friday 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 5, closed Sundays. The news that matters to Kalamazoo at the top and bottom of every hour, all day long, weekdays, on 590 and 106.9 FM. WKZO. 850. Nature Watch continues. Francis, our big winner from Madawan, $20 gift card to uh, Waddell's. And Gary, um, tell us a little bit about that, uh, about that first, um, that first, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, National Wildlife Refuge. Yeah, thank you. So, so I, I, I couldn't here, get it. Here I couldn't on, get it out. Yeah, here on Nash- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so here on National Wildlife Refuge is uh, consists of eight small islands totaling 147 acres, and it's located three miles off the south shore of Lake Superior in Marquette County, here up here in the Upper Peninsula. Um, it was established in 1905 as a refuge and breeding ground for migratory birds and other wildlife, especially the herring gull which had large nesting colonies on the islands. Uh, these early bird sanctuaries were vital for several species of birds, including the herring gull, whose populations had been drastically reduced by plume hunters and egg collectors in the 1800s and early 1900s. All islands are closed to the public except for Lighthouse Island. So uh, if you want to go out and visit, you can get the one island, you can visit them. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, bird droppings you may have to walk around there, but... Uh, the uh, just offshore, uh, and you don't want to fall in the water because the water is pretty quite cold in Lake Superior too. So, uh, okay. but you know, one of those another another of the wildlife refuges that you can uh, visit. Um, what well, refuges are actually fun to visit because you see a lot of unique species, um, and sometimes, especially with migrations going through, you see a lot of waterfowl. A lot of them involve water. Um, I know Sini gets a lot of raptors coming through from from across Lake Superior and. Uh, out of Canada and a lot of wild or, or waterfowl coming through. Um, but uh, so it's fun to see all that, that uh, migration. And uh, so, so at, uh, you know, you, you, nice chance. Actually, a lot of times they have some nice hiking trails and that around some of those, uh, those bodies. Uh, they sometimes have that water for uh, nesting. So like in Sini, they a lot of times have their pools that they flood uh, when uh, birds are in their nesting ha- uh, mode in the spring or early summer. So the predators can't reach their nests, and then uh, later in the season they may um, drop the water level in some of those pools um, for those uh, the birds and uh, wildlife. Um, Sini usually has some eagle nests, so it's actually so neat to see some of the eagle nests or see some of the eagle flying around. Um, I know I've seen quite a few sandhill cranes uh, in various pockets up here in, in years past. Saw a few uh, a couple times here in fields, but. Uh, Oh, a lot of deer. Um, like I said, I had to stop earlier in the week and uh, up here, up here in the Upper Peninsula, and uh, trying to evade deer, uh, watching for them to come out. So, haven't seen any moose yet, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is probably probably good. I don't want don't want to meet a moose with my truck. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> with with my vehicle, I don't want to meet anything. E- even a, <laughs> well, even a well, turkey, I'm, I'm, a turkey might take out my front end. You know. <laughs> I've I've met deer several times with my truck and vehicles in the past. I don't want to do that again either because a couple of times ago had some significant damage. So, right. uh, not well, not uh, not a fun uh, task to take care of. Well, but, it, uh, moose are much much larger. <laughs> if you want to talk to Gary in Munising, you can give us a call here three eight two four two eight zero. We have just a few moments left though in Nature Watch. If you have a nature question, call in and uh, you can ask Gary your question. He's way up in the UP, eh? <laughs> yeah, so actually I am up here, eh? Uh, so I, I was looking uh, at the forecast uh, a week ago uh, for what the uh, northern lights are going to be doing. And it's interesting with the northern lights in the next several years, um, we are going to see a lot of activity. Um, now, they, they can project so this. They can project it out that far next few years well really. it's, it's based on the cycles of the sun to the sun uh, um, okay. every every about 11 years or so um, the sun's magnetic field reaches its solar maximum and that's usually when the number of solar flares is at its highest 
and that usually creates those uh, magnetic storms that cause the northern lights. And so uh, that they can sort of it's sort of cyclical with the with the sun. So that's what they pretty well project. Um, and uh, so uh, they can usually predict fairly good with where it's going to be, but they pop up so fast. Um, it's just a sort of a best guess and sort of based on historical data. Uh, so, uh, you know, if there's somebody they're predicting that there's northern lights may be visible in southern Michigan, you want to take advantage if the sky is clear because uh, that uh, would be uh, you know advantageous to see that. <clears throat> I, I was looking at the forecast when I was coming north. I thought, oh, boy, clear skies up here, and I might be able to see northern lights. They haven't been very active this far south, even in the upper peninsula. Oh. This week, so yeah. <clears throat> I was I was hoping. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't come to fruition. So maybe next time. There you go. Um, it, it is nice seeing the dark skies up here at night, though. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, a lot of stars. So at a uh, little little foggy this morning. Not bad. Uh, yesterday morning was uh, had some big patch of fog. Um, so it's uh, be interesting. Actually, the last couple of mornings had some fog <clears throat> and. Just uh, with the temperatures getting down low enough and down by that dew point, and that moisture in the air just condenses. So, at uh, but nice up here. Nice seeing all the different green up here. I always get those different colors of green up here in the upper peninsula that you get from down south. So, yeah, always interesting to see. That uh, you can't you can't really take a photo to catch all the different nuances and all the different tones of green, but uh, there are so many when you come up and you see them with the naked eye, and it's uh, always fun to see. Yeah, well, with some of those different textures, some of the trees and that. Uh, when when are you coming back? By the way, so actually, I'm, I'm heading back tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, you may you may encounter so, some showers down here. Yeah, um, I was looking it, at the forecast. It looks like it might get a little bit of moisture, but <clears throat> and I need to wash all the dust off my truck now. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, you might get lucky and just have it rained off. Um, yeah, looking at next week, we're actually uh, pretty much upper 60s to mid 70s straight through the stretch. Um, the only chances of rain dry. that I see, yeah, the only chances of rain I see come today and tomorrow, effectively. So, yeah, and it uh, you know, again with those showers coming through, it's going to be. I think it looks so much for when I look at the forecast and the radar, it looks like it's going to be somewhat spotty, um, and we're still going to be on that dry side. So, uh, be careful with those bonfires. And, uh, Make sure you have water uh, handy. I'm not sure if I haven't seen anything that they've released or put any fire um, limitations out there yet. For no, I haven't seen uh, any either, which which is kind of surprises me. Yeah, I, I am surprised if they haven't yet because we, even though despite the some moisture, it's still quite dry out there. That um, right. all that vegetation starting to dry down for going into fall dormancy, winter dormancy, uh, that can get pretty uh, flammable at times. Right. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to ask you if you're working today. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just 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 right now, that's it. Uh, no, I'm actually going to maybe stop at Sini and uh, maybe you know, take a look at a few other places up here in the Upper Peninsula, sort of heading partway down today. So, that, okay. uh, yeah, it's nice, nice to get up here, though. I could spend a long time up here. <laughs> oh, right. that's, I, have, the, I have to open up a remote studio on uh, maybe a remote Waddell site or something up here. <laughs> there you go. Kind of like Larry Bell expanding, you know, he's got his yes, yes, brewery. Yes. Yeah, there you go. That's how, well, that's I do have, have to do have to talk. I do have to make one mention. I didn't catch, couldn't catch all of that. Uh, we had a little connection problem at the beginning. That uh, how about those tigers, huh? <laughs> Gotta get. Yes, sir. Oh my goodness, you did hear the highlight, right? So, yes, it's uh, nice to see that. Oh. It's about time. Oh, I know it. <laughs> and, we, we, and, they're, uh, now, and they're hot right now. They are. Yeah. And before I let you go, you know, you're going to have to wait, have to wait at least into the next week before before we may see an actual playoff game at Comerica Park. We have to get through the next series, which will be on the road. So, there you go. Oh. All right, Gary, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, that's been fun, despite the little technical difficulties we had at the beginning. There. Yeah, but, we, uh, we we made it through. You you came right. You came in right on time. There you go. I haven't haven't had to re- revert back to the uh, the stringer wire with ten cans yet. Yep. So I guess we're good. There you go. Thanks, <laughs> Gary. Have fun. Take care up there, and thank you for listening to this edition of Nature Watch. 
Tune in each Saturday morning at 8.30 for Nature Watch, brought to you by Waddell's Nursery, Floral, Garden, and Bird Center at the corner of 12th Street and Millam Road. Over the Garden Fence with Andy Waddell is next on 590 and 106.9 FM WKZO. Everything Kalamazoo and the best news talk to 590 and 106.9 FM WKZO Kalamazoo.